About two years ago, Janelle Wright and several of her class of 88 McClure North High School friends started wondering why so many of their peers were battling cancer. At first, there were 30 cases. Within two months, she had data on 200. Now, her maps have 700 cases in four square miles. The creek where they played as children carried a secret. As early as 1949, the government knew that radioactive waste from this process was spilling into Coldwater Creek. 62 brain cancers, 27 cases of leukemia, 26 cases of lung cancer, 24 cases of multiple sclerosis, 15 cases of lymphoma, 10 cases of pancreatic cancer, and three cases of conjoined twins. The government quietly ordered the material moved to North St. Louis County in 1947. There were trucks that hauled it from uh, downtown St. Louis to some of the storage sites, spilled it on the roads and into cornfields. These barrels were corroding. They were leaking and getting into the river. Let's not put those workers at risk. Let's let it continue to spill into the creek. Mm -hmm. What was the risk that it posed to the people who lived in those homes who were in that neighborhood from that contamination blowing off property? That's a big question. That's a big question indeed, but to answer it, I'll take you back a little bit. In 1981, Coldwater Creek was labeled as one of the most polluted waterways in the United States. But despite this, the United States government said nothing. Until 2016, when the Center for Disease Control and Prevention advised residents to avoid Coldwater Creek entirely. Along with this, during a federal study in the same year, they found that the residents around Coldwater Creek had elevated rates for breast, colon, prostate, kidney, and bladder cancers, as well as leukemia. What was going on in Coldwater Creek? What caused all of this radioactive material to be there? And most importantly, why did the government hide the fact that all of these people were in danger in their homes until 2023? This all sounds awful already, but I assure you, when you dig a little bit deeper into the situation, it gets much, much worse. This might just be the United States' biggest blunder involving nuclear energy. Their handling of the situation caused hundreds, maybe even thousands of people to contract deadly illnesses. And the worst thing? This situation could have been easily avoided if it weren't for everybody involved turning a blind eye to the situation for literal decades. Let's start in 1942, in the middle of World War II. The United States had received intelligence that the Axis powers were in development of a superweapon. This superweapon was a bomb that could allegedly wipe a city off the map. Because of this, the United States government needed their own superweapon. The United States would call the creation of this weapon the Manhattan Project. As I hope we all know, the result of this would be the development of the nuclear bomb. But to make these bombs, they would need something very hard to obtain. They would need processed uranium. The company they hired for the processing was Mallinckrodt Chemical Works, who processed the uranium in their downtown St. Louis plant. But it would be incredibly costly, not just money-wise either. This processing would end up being incredibly ecologically damaging for everything in and around the plant. The United States would spend an approximate $2.2 billion on the Manhattan Project, and they would create hundreds of thousands of tons of nuclear waste in the cycle of processing the uranium they need for the bombs. This would all come to a head in 1945, when the Trinity test happened and the first plutonium implosion device was detonated successfully. Shortly after this, America dropped two atomic bombs on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, signaling the end of World War II. But wait, I said that during the processing of the uranium, they create hundreds of thousands of tons of waste. What exactly happened to all of it? Well, as you could guess, nuclear waste is quite infamous for being extremely hard to get rid of. This meant that the United States government had millions of gallons of nuclear waste left over from the Manhattan Project, and they sure as hell didn't want it, so they decided to sell it off. They ended up selling it to Cooter Corp, who would attempt to filter out any precious metals or resources they found in the waste. But the process of finding the buyers took quite a long time, so they decided while they looked, they would leave all of these barrels filled with waste out in a field next to the St. Louis airport. They were left like this for 20 years, from 1946 to 1966. It is estimated that the barrels may have deteriorated and polluted nearby land and water sources as early as 1949. 
and Mallinckrodt Chemical Works knew of the potential pollution risk the barrels raised, but they decided that they were unable to move them due to the risk it would cause their workers. And when they did eventually sell their waste to Cooter Corp, they would transfer most of it to Lay Avenue for drying, and eventually it was shipped to Colorado. But drying hundreds of thousands of tons of nuclear waste takes time, and they had nowhere to store all of this waste. This meant that the nuclear waste was left out in the open exposed to the elements again. Both of these sites, after this was done, were left contaminated for decades after this. The process of drying all of these materials lasts from 1966 to 1973, meaning that these barrels, at the latest, were left in the open for 27 years, deteriorating and leaking, causing mass pollution and radiation of anything nearby. So, when I said that all of this waste was polluting everything around it, that includes Coldwater Creek, which borders both of the sites that this waste was stored. This caused the creek to be polluted for literal miles. Another little geography fact is that Coldwater Creek now runs through several busy suburban towns, including Hazelwood, Berkeley, Florissant, Old Jamestown, Blackjack, and Spanish Lake. This led to all of these towns showing an increase in cancer rates for all of the people who would be in or around the creek for any reasons. Back to Cotter Corpse, who bought all this waste. In 1973, after all of the waste that could realistically be used for materials was shipped off, they were left with about 8,700 tons of leftover waste. And what did they decide to do with all of it? They decided to dump it illegally in a public landfill called West Lake along with 39,000 tons of topsoil that was also contaminated from their site. The government eventually found out what they did, but they were at a loss for what to do. There were so many parties involved, and while they said that Cotter Corp was clearly in violation, they thought they mixed so much topsoil with the waste that it was essentially harmless. And because the United States legal system is kind of garbage, Cotter Corp got off essentially scot-free, only having to pay partially for the cleanup of the area. But dumping all of this waste randomly would come back to bite them in 2010, when a subsurface smoldering event, or SSE, took place. An SSE is where a fire starts in a landfill due to a chemical reaction combined with extreme heat and a lack of oxygen. And this would cause a foul smelling dust to invade nearby towns. When this dust was tested, it was found to contain hundreds of times the natural amount of thorium than normal. Thorium is not a good thing. In fact, I would go as far to say that thorium is a very bad thing. And being exposed to thorium is very bad for you. Being exposed to thorium can cause you to be an increased risk for bone cancer. And inhaling it is even worse for you. Inhaling thorium puts you on much greater risk for lung and pancreatic cancer. Any of these factors alone would be awful, yes, but not horrendously impactful. But all of them combined led to absolutely catastrophic results in the environment. At the center of all this is Coldwater Creek and the people who live around it. The population that lives around Coldwater Creek have been ravaged by the leaked radioactive material, and it has caused children born between 1960s and 90s, and even today to an extent, to have a much higher rate of cancer than any other part of the United States. And guess what? This is even the worst part of the story yet. The situation gets so much worse when you find out what the CIA did during all of this. When all this was happening, the government was releasing papers downplaying how bad the pollution actually was. And what was not known until recently was that they lied about almost everything in relation to the pollution at Coldwater Creek. In 2023, the CIA released documents showing that they knew that the waters of Coldwater Creek could be severely contaminated and potentially dangerous to live near. But wait a second, I just said these documents were released in 2023. So when were they actually written? Well, these documents were originally written in 1949 and are only now being released to the public. That's right, only a few years after Mallinckrodt put all of the waste in barrels, the CIA received a report from Mallinckrodt that the residue from processing all of the uranium was producing large amounts of K-65, an incredibly radioactive material, and they were storing the K-65 produced in deteriorating steel drums. And although they knew that these barrels would inevitably leak, they simply could not replace them because, and I quote, the hazards to the workers involved in such an occupation would be considerable. When they were processing uranium in World War II, Mallinckrodt put in another report that the risk of polluting Coldwater Creek was far less serious and immediate than the jobs the workers on site were doing. This meant that even during the Manhattan Project, the CIA knew that they could very well be polluting Coldwater Creek. After the war, the United States had to move all of the leftover K-65, and they decided to move it via truck next to the airport, as I mentioned before. And it later describes that in 1965, in a government report, 
They discovered that the mountain of radioactive waste was drained into the creek and causing, quote, some minor contamination in Coldwater Creek. This was, of course, an understatement. At the time, Coldwater Creek was already incredibly radioactive and dangerous to be near. And remember why I said a little while ago that most of the waste was transported to Laddie Avenue? Well, they just said f*** it and decided to bury the other 50 to 60 truckloads of leftover waste underground. And as far as I know, they're still there today, just buried next to the airport. And get this, in the late 1970s, there were reports that uranium, radium, and thorium were found in a drainage ditch next to the site. Yet, they didn't do anything. Another astounding discovery in these reports came later in 1976, where the Department of Energy requested that they test the land and surrounding land and water. The results clearly were not good. They found that the land is about five times higher in radiation than a person receives normally in a year. And the water was even worse. The test showed that the water surrounding the airport was 220 times more radioactive than the EPA's recommended amount for drinking water. And I cannot stress this enough, that the public did not know about these tests until 1990, more than 10 years after they were taken. Now you could make the argument that the government didn't know that this incredibly dangerous water was leaking into Coldwater Creek, but you would be wrong. Only a little bit later, the Department of Energy publicly acknowledged that the site of the waste was contaminated and eroding. They also also said because of this, the radioactive waste was transporting contaminated materials into the drain system and Coldwater Creek. Now, this is an ongoing event. There is still an incredible amount of radiation at all of these locations. And we are still making discoveries on this case today, such as in 2013, when we found that the soil of the West Lake landfill was 30 to 50 times more irradiated than normal. And yet, the government still has made any large statements on these events, and almost nobody is reporting on this. The government's current position is not to spend emergency funds on cleanup because this would be too costly. And they still say that the radiation is not the dangerous enough to warrant the cost. But if you look into this topic at all, you will see thousands of people affected by this, contracting all of these awful illnesses. But recently, there has been a slight win for the people who've been affected by the radiation Coldwater Creek. A few months ago, a bill was passed that would compensate the victims of Coldwater Creek. But this situation is still far from over. And please, if you want to help, spread the word. Almost no one is covering that this is happening, and it really would help a lot. The more people that know about this situation, the better. Also, check out the Just Moms STL Facebook group. It's a group of people who have been directly affected by this situation. Anyways, that's the video. Thanks for watching, I hope you learned something, and if you did, why not like and subscribe? It helps the video do better, so more people will hopefully see this. Again, thanks for watching, and bye.